but people still lined up so they could run in, the young ones anyway, and get the best seats in the house as UConn is getting ready to open up against Jackson State. The Tigers, the SWAT champions this year, no stranger to the tournament here for the third time in the last six years. There are a lot of stars for UConn. Aaliyah Edwards, the All-American, even though she's a Canadian and expected to go fifth in the upcoming draft. And Paige Beckers did not play last year in the NCAA tournament because she was hurt. She's ready to go. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We come to you from Gamble Pavilion, as usual, packed to the Raptors to see their beloved UConn Huskies Juno Oriemis team, a three seed, the lowest they have been in quite some time, taking on the SWAT champs from Jackson State. Later on today on ESPN2, we'll have Syracuse and Arizona. The winner of that game will play the winner of this game, and ultimately the winner of Duke, Ohio State, takes on the winner from Stores in the Sweet 16 all the way out in Portland, Oregon. And we welcome you to Gamble, Pam Ward, along with Christy Winters-Scott. And as always, a great atmosphere here. Christy, at the University of Maryland, you went to a Final Four, so you know what March Madness is all about. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter your classification, whether you're a freshman or a senior. You've got to be ready for this moment. You've worked hard for this moment, and now it's time to show and prove. And we get to see a lot of stars in this game. And we can start with the University of Connecticut, two of the very best in the country in Beckers and Edwards. Well, when you're talking about these two players, it's a one-two punch from the end side from the outside and everywhere else let's start on the interior with Aaliyah Edwards she's missed the last two games with a broken nose she's averaging 17 9 and 2 assists per game she's recently committed to the WNBA draft coming up in April but Paige Beckers I like to call her PB with the J you can call her Paige Buckets if you want to because that's what she does 21 points per game five rebounds and four assists she's also second on the team with 73 steals she's hungry and ready to compete and scoring at a great pace again AP first team All-American Aaliyah Edwards will be playing for the first time in two weeks after breaking her nose in the Big East tournament now taking on a Jackson State team they're really good in the SWAC they've really dominated it for the last few years and played a brutal schedule this year at non-conference they did and that has prepared that team for this moment coach Reed has them set up because they have won 51 consecutive home games and look at what they've done in the SWAC this season they won the regular season title for the past five years in a row won the tournament this year and propelled them to get here to stores to compete at the highest level they are going to take on the UConn Huskies Paige Beckers ready to go hope you are too we'll be right back with the tip Welcome back to Gamble Pavilion, where Jackson State's getting ready to tip off against UConn. Very first round game in this Regional 3 in Portland. As we take a look at today's starting lineups, brought to you by Capital One, and let's start with the Jackson 5. Tion Bowler and Maya Crump, both first-team all-swag performers. Angel Jackson is a great shot blocker. And there are the UConn Huskies. K.K. Arnold and Ashlyn Shade are true freshmen. Well, you love to see the freshmen come to life for UConn, but for the Jackson 5, like you said, who's going to be Michael? Who's going to be Tito? Well, we know Gino would probably be the ultimate. How about happy 70th birthday to our man, Gino Oriema. Today is indeed his birthday, and he has won over 1,200 games in his career, 11 national championships, but they've been dry since 2016. Well, a phenomenal effort by them to get to where they have gotten today with all the injuries, a litany of them, six players out with injuries for UConn. So state scholarship players available, Jackson State in their away reds. Shana Luckett with the basketball. She is a hometown kid from Jackson, Mississippi. UConn starts in man-to-man -man defense, and they're switching, but it didn't matter for Jackson State right there. It's Maya Crump, a grad student from Houston, Texas. Some 2-2-1 pressure here, containment pressure. Three-quarter court by Jackson State. They're in a man-to-man -man defense here in the quarter court as well. Edwards playing with the mask because she has a broken nose. This is her first game in two weeks. Beckers somehow got around a couple of players to score. Well, Paige Beckers, she's so crafty with it. 
She attacked that second line of defense, which was a post player, but she got around her. Malia Edwards, not so fast with that drive. Malia Edwards, as we said, has missed the last two games with that broken nose, obviously wearing that protective covering. And that has been an injury that has plagued her for the last couple of seasons. Right off the inbounds, Jackson State, we were here for practice yesterday, and they're not intimidated. There are a lot of them, they were looking around the building, soaking it on it, all in, but not at all. Not at all, and they're ready for this moment. And credit Coach Reed and her staff for mentally preparing them to be here, and not just be here, but be ready to execute. Ran the table in the SWAC regular season and won the tournament. Beckers does it again. Come on now, she got fouled as well. We forget about how lanky and crafty Paige Beckers is until she tries to get to the cup. She got touched on the shoulder and she said, oh, I've been in the weight room though. She swelled up to let you know that she's strong and she can get through the wickets and smooch it off the window for a deuce. Beckers off to a tremendous start. She has all five of UConn's points. She has twice been named the Big East Player of the Year this year named Scholar of the year as well, so getting it done on and off the court is Paige Beckers. Inside, Jackson decided to pass it back out. Three attempts, no good. Beckers comes up with the rebound. She's averaging five boards per game. Nika Mule into Edwards. Good defense by Jackson, who induced the, a charge call. Too pleased about that call. Leah Edwards was walled up on the interior, so credit Jackson State with thwarting an opportunity on the interior for the Huskies. Was just anticipating a travel call. Instead, Edwards picks up her first foul. Tigers keep it alive. Let's see if they can get some screening action to free some avenues. KK Arnold leads UConn and steals. 78 on the season. Beckers comes up with another rebound. Mahoney with the defensive assignment on her. Now Beckers is alone, and Jackson, who is a very good shot blocker, fourth in the nation, in fact, blocked Edwards' shot, and that had a couple words for him. Uh, a couple of words, but he didn't really need to say anything because a picture says a thousand words, and that was some prideful defense by Angel Jackson on the inside. Dribbling right into trouble, and that's a travel. Mahoney with the turnover. These two teams, these two programs have never met before. There's the head coach that's done such a great job. Tamika Reed now in her sixth year has taken her team to three NCAA tournaments. And that's a nice drive and finish for Arnold. And KK Arnold. Only a freshman, but I tell you what, as soon as that calendar flips to January, I always just crown them sophomores. I mean, they have had so many extra minutes on the court because of the injuries. Edwards fouled on uh, the rebound attempt. KK Arnold, she just does such a great job right here of surveying, finding where to attack. Paige Beckers empties out to the weak side, takes her defender with her, and she gets all the way to the rim. Arnold, Big East All-Freshman Performer this year. And the Big East Championship again. <laughs> That's something Gino Arima said. He said, you know, we're not coming in with 111 consecutive wins. We're not coming off of a national title. They can hate on somebody else right now. We're just going to come in here and continue to chop wood and do the work. And that is what has gotten them here with the short rotation of players. But they stay disciplined to the philosophy set forth by the staff. Yeah, there's the bench right there. I mean, a lot of, lot of play. Never good when you see him in sweats. No. Avent into the game for Jackson State, and everything is going Paige Becker's way in this game. Well, that last one brought this sold-out crowd to their feet. 
This is the first sold-out crowd here for the first round of games for UConn women's basketball since 2002. And Paige Beckers, and she is back and ready to compete, as we said. Look at the flick of the wrist. A nice, friendly bounce. Had enough spin on it to come on back and drop into the bag. <laughs> You'd love to see it. Paige followed it, though. Basics and fundamentals still in full effect. She wasn't sure if it was going to fall. Shooters know where it's going to go. Front rim, top of the backboard, into the bottom of the net. There you go. That's gorgeous. Edwards finding Mule. Leah Edwards with the assist. The post players. UConn up by eight as we take our first break in stores. Let's check out who is fueling the run. Brought to you by Wendy's. The UConn Huskies ranked number two in the preseason, but they stumbled early on against NC State, who at the time was unranked. They have lost every game, all five of them, to ranked teams. And you see six players out with injuries. AZ Fudd there on the right. But still, they went undefeated in the Big East during the regular season and won the tournament championship. Lowest seed since 2005 at number three. As we look at today's Need to Know, brought to you by Dick's Sporting Goods. And look at, I mean, that banner has a little, they're going to have to add another row soon. Uh, UConn Huskies, last loss in the first round way back in 1993 in Louisville when Rebecca Lova was a sophomore. That was two years before they won their national championship. And when they win 50 straight here in the first round, they win big by over 30 points per game. And there's Rebecca's hey. banner up it. in the Raptors. And... UConn trying to get back. They were eliminated in the Sweet 16 last year by Ohio State, breaking an unbelievable string of success. And Aaliyah Edwards, well, she's projected to go very high in the WNBA draft, and she's showing some stuff right now. Yeah, top five for sure for Aaliyah Edwards, who recently committed to the WNBA draft, which will be on April 15th, but definitely ready for it. It is a 12-0 UConn run. A whistle before the basket. Let's look at Aaliyah Edwards. My best basketball dreams as a post player are to get into the gap in the live floor and take it all the way to the rim in a fast break manner. And you love that Aaliyah Edwards has that in her repertoire to be able to attack that way and not have to rely on a guard to come and get it and give it back to her. She possesses the speed and agility to do it herself. Really has shown improvement every single year. Missed that jump shot wide right. Edwards is from Kingston, Ontario. Was part of the Canadian Olympic team back in what was really 2021. And is soon going to be playing in the WNBA. You love to see it. She was third team All-American last year. Jackson State has gone ice cold now. Missed their last six shots from the floor. Edwards this time around the other side. Well, that time she went right into the body of Angel Jackson after getting her shot blocked on that first shot early in this game. At that time, took it straight to her and got enough space to release it and finish. Tigers have not scored in four and a half minutes. Beckers chases it down. And what Jackson State can't do is rely on the outside shooting. They're going to have to get some screening action and try to get some dribble drives to the rim. Beckers left it short. Second chance. Ashlyn Shade unable to get it in. Another freshman for UConn. And she has been solid. Look at her getting the steals. Shade was the Big East freshman of the year. Mule thought about it, but instead decided to give it up to Arnold. And then Arnold has her shot rejected by Bowler. See if they can pay it off on the other end. Nope. Here comes Mule. Two on one. Gives it up. Shade with the finish. And the foul. It is a 16-0 UConn run. Well, UConn's defense has been paying dividends. Getting into the passing lanes gives them the ability to push tempo, drop dimes, and finish with contact. The NCAA Women's Championship 
is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Jackson State celebrating their championship along with UConn. Both of them taking home tournament titles and earning automatic bids to this championship. And boy, the last few minutes have been all UConn. Jackson State looking for its first win ever in the NCAA tournament. UConn going for its 30th straight win in the first round. In its history, UConn has won 132 NCAA games. Jackson State, 132 less. They're still looking for number one. So that would be zero. Wow. But they have to have the opportunities, and they have to earn their opportunities out of the SWAC. They did that by winning the tournament this year, going 18-0, running the table in the SWAC this year. And Coach Reed, I mean, just listening to her story, I mean, she lost her mom. She lost her dad, lost her brother, and was really not really feeling coaching and, and lost her drive and motivation. But she said, these kids need me. She has an 11-year-old son who needs her. And you can see her continuing to pour in. And she said it's much more than wins and losses. It's about giving these young people an opportunity to learn and grow. Ashlyn Shea completes the three-point play. Coach Reed in her sixth year now with the Tigers. So they were hoping for a little bit higher seed than the 14 they got. And here they are playing a long way from home in stores. That's a travel. The last 13 possessions for Jackson State have resulted in six turnovers. And UConn already has scored eight points off of Jackson State turnovers. There is the coach and has done such a great job with this program. She's also said that, you know, that she characterizes her team as being tough care bears. She's like, they're aggressive, and they'll fight you in terms of being aggressive competitors. But they'll hug you after games and practices. And it's a sisterhood for them. And you can feel that in their practices. Yeah, it makes a big, big difference. She had to integrate a lot of grad students and transfers into it. Took them a little while to hit their stride. And they certainly did that with 26 wins. Ice Brady, number 25, is in the game now for... UConn. Jackson State hit two of its first three shots, and since then, they're empty. They're getting good looks. I thought that one was good. They got the ball reversed a couple of times, got it to the top. Clean look. Shade off the rim. Now on the run, Jackson State's a team that can push picks. And they want to, but they haven't been able to get the stops necessary to do that because of the way UConn is shooting the basketball. They're taking it out of the net. The drive, and it's blocked by Brady. Brady with the full-on denial. You've got to kick that out after you commit a defender like Brady to the ball. Rule threw it in traffic, and that resulted in a turnover. Going right at Paige Becker's a lot of contact, and no foul has been called. The ball stays with the Tigers. The officials are discussing it. Joe Vasili, Tom Danaher, and Chastity Taylor are officials this afternoon. We approach two minutes left in the first quarter. See Jackson State about to run this 1-4 flat set. We saw them working on this in practice. Going to rise that lane line player and set a little back screen in this. Beckers goes out. Aaliyah Edwards jumped off the bench. They wanted her subbed in as soon as Angel Jackson at 6'6", number 15 in red, came back in for Jackson State. Let's see what Jackson State can organize here on the offensive end. They've got the ball reversals, but still relying on those outside shots. Let's see if they can get into the paint, get a piece of it. Got a couple of shots blocked. There's a whistle with the shot attempt by Tyon Bowler, a senior from Meridian, Mississippi. Tyon was named to the SWAC All-Tournament team most recently for her efforts. You can see her effort on that last possession is to get downhill and try to attack that paint. Becker's next to Chris Daly, who's been here all 39 years with Coach Oriema. Tomorrow, the NCAA Women's Basketball Championship second round begins on ABC. North Carolina takes on South Carolina at 1 Eastern. 
10 a.m. Pacific, then it's Middle Tennessee, the Louisville Killers, taking on LSU. And there you see the rest of the lineup coming up. All games available also on the app. Congratulations to Middle. Savannah Wheeler have herself a day. Upsetting Louisville and upsetting a lot of people, especially one on ABC. Well, we're not getting the LSU Louisville game tomorrow. Right. I know. How about that? And that's why it's called March Madness, right? Because you just have to expect the unexpected. Mule, nope. Shade gives him a second chance. Brady, the lefty, pops in and out. And here's the tempo. Get aboard and initiate the offense. That's a good look. Finally, the drought ends for Jackson State. They had gone over seven minutes without a point. Well, basketball is a rhythm game. And the rhythm for Jackson State all season has been get it and go. But they haven't been able to get the stops, but that time they were able to. Mahoney got the shot. UConn's getting some rolls today. Ashlyn Shade with the big smile. Ashlyn Shade, a top 15 player coming out of high school last season. Just a tough-minded, competitive player for UConn and Gino Ariema. Second chance now for Jackson State. Trying to get a little double drag action there and split it. But you don't want to go right into Leah Edwards. Can't do that. And Jackson State's going to learn. They've got to drive, get walled up, and find the next player. Yeah, get a plan B. Yeah. Or C. It's plan A, as in Leah Edwards, isn't going to work. That's a travel. So 11 and a half seconds now for Jackson State to try to score. Now this is what makes Ashlyn Shade so invaluable to UConn's success. She's able to come in and knock in some triples. The extra pass gets to her three ball corner pocket hits the rim about five times but it doesn't matter and she's smiling about it and it still counts Jackson State this time does get to the rim Jackson shot not in time and it's 22 to 8 UConn after one quarter of play Leah Edwards off to a great start this presentation of the NCAA Women's Championship on ABC will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to Stores. Paige Beckers has been phenomenal. To start this game here at home, smooching it off the window, knocking in a point goal three, hit everything but the bottom of the net till the very end. But Aaliyah Edwards has also been dominant. On the defensive end, disallowing any touches, but also being a point forward and also getting into gaps and finishing in transition. She has done all things great for UConn. And also has a couple of blocks as we look at today's star stories brought to you by Honda. And it's the, the uh, dynamic duo of Beckers and Edwards. Well, they just have such fantastic synergy with one another, great rhythm. And UConn, they have forced six turnovers, and they've been able to score nine points off of those, and that has been a huge difference, but also the paint points. UConn has 12 of their 22 points on the interior, and that has where, is where they have been showing their dominance. Brady is the only sub that Gina Oriema has used so far in this game, whereas Jackson State has used 10 players already. Deeper bench for Coach Reed. Another jump shot. Here's Brady. This did not play last year. Shade this time can't get the friendly bounce. Mule hit the deck. Mule trying to get up for that offensive rebound. Just brushes it off. Gets ready for the next play. It's when you have a short rotation, I know when we went to the Final Four, we had eight players. So you just have to be disciplined mentally, right? And it's the right choices on both sides. You can't bulldoze your way into a defender. And on the defensive end, you can't go for the blocks. You've got to be in great position. Mule gets it out to Edwards. And a foul against UConn. We're going to see that depth question Big time in our next game as Arizona is going to take on DeAsia Fair and Syracuse. Look out because uh, Arizona only has seven players. They have eight, but only seven play. Seven play. And that has been 
a paramount key for success for their journey, especially over the last couple of months. Adia Barnes, she has really gotten them to stay discipline-minded. Edgebackers. That was a good defensive play by Crump. And is that the, the uh, UConn players are asking for goaltending, and they got it. Maya Crump going up. Oh, boy, look at this block, or attempt of a block, right up there at the rim area, and that shot was on the way down. Well, it hit the backboard, so that was that was it. But you don't see that call a lot in women's basketball. Maya Crump oh. listed at 6-2, showing... Like her athleticism. Edwards cradles the Jackson miss. Hey, Leah Edwards. Might have gotten hit in the face. Just readjusted that mask, but wow, get your own touch. There's a nice finish for Luckett. She scores for the first time this afternoon. It's probably the easiest bucket she has had. Edwards blocked again by Jackson. Well, Leah Edwards, she doesn't need entry passes to get two hands on the basketball. Look at her just doing her work off the ball, flying in with the greatest of ease, and getting that tough bucket down in the trenches. And again, had to readjust that mask. Missed the last two games with that broken nose. But she's a toughie. Becker's off the inbound. Jackson from the outside hits the shot. Angel Jackson from Richmond, California is a transfer from USC. Yes. They're, they're good this year, Juju Watkins and company. Yeah, how about the first time receiving a one seed since 1986? Cheryl Miller and company. Jackson coming over from USC, wanting to go to a smaller environment, a more intimate environment, and she has really enjoyed her time down in Jackson, Mississippi, back-to-back. Black Defensive Player of the Year. And there you see USC, one of the four top seeds along with South Carolina. Iowa's coming up next after us here on ABC. And Texas getting that final number one. Jackson has a couple of back-to-back -back buckets. We love to see her getting in a great rhythm already with two power blocks on the defensive end and now some nice feathery touch jumpers from the nail falling for her as well. Jackson State getting getting in the passing lanes. Angel Jackson has been extremely impactful. They have changed the course for this Jackson State squad who has been anemic here in the first half in patches and stretches. But she has the cure for that in the last couple of possessions. Mule inside to Beckers. And you did perfect. Pass over to Edwards who comes up limping a little bit after the basket. Something to keep an eye on. But Jackson State, the last several possessions, they've gone to 2-3 zone. Drive on the baseline. Ball bounces. Recovered by the Tigers. Jackson can't get the follower to go, and then a foul on the Tigers. Let's take a look and see what happened with Aaliyah Edwards on that last play. You see her right there in the pinch post on the drive, and just kind of seemed like she stepped on someone's foot down there and lost her footing. You can see her a little gimpy coming in. After that one. Last thing you want to see for the Huskies, but she's still in there flexing that leg. And we've been told that Gina Oriema has gotten a warning for bench decorum for going a little bit too far outside of the coach's box. On his birthday? On his birthday. Give him a little present. Come on, girl. <laughs> rules are rules. We get it. That has been one of the points of emphasis 
in the in officiating this year. There's a foul on UConn. See, this is what I like, the intentionality on offense by Jackson State right now. They've been trying to get themselves into the painted area against UConn. And there's some drop coverage on the outside, kind of baiting them into taking those outside shots. But just because you're being baited into that shot or that action doesn't mean you have to go for it. Foul on Shades and some luck to the line. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. And there you see the schedule, all games on the app as well. And it all culminates the first weekend in April in Cleveland, Ohio. I love to see it. So many eyes on women's basketball and women's athletics in general. Everybody watches women's sports. Mule decides not to challenge Jackson, who's an elite shot blocker. Beckers is just a, just a genius at creating space for herself. Absolutely, and also, she's a genius at body balance, right? She lets players fly by, and that's a tough shot, because then you have to reposition your shot pocket and your legs. Emphatic rebound. Yeah, Edwards is wide open downstairs. KK Arnold just decided to bring it back out and take some time here. This time Edwards returns the favor into Beckers. And the connection of dots by Aaliyah Edwards has really been impressive to see. I mean, the point forward ability that she has displayed here in the first half on a couple of really great passes has really been fun. Halfway through the second quarter, UConn doubling up Jackson State. It's a little bit of a push of an arm by Luckett, but nothing was called. Edwards goes in for another rebound while on her way to a, another double-double. She has 16 of them this year. That was first in the Big East. Mule. Bounce pass, Edwards waited for Jackson to go by, and then Jackson fouled her. Well, it has been a dynamic duo on full display here in stores. Paige Beckers hanging in the air for a tough bucket, and then Aaliyah Edwards getting her own touches on the offensive boards and putting it down. See you at the half. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come on, Drea. Drea yeah. could block gold yeah. tent something. Maybe like an eight-foot basket. Uh, hey, man. Something. Nerf hoop. <laughs> Drea, it's all love, though. She knows it. <laughs> Lee Edwards at the free throw line. Paige Beckers and the rest of UConn. Yeah, they're winning this game 32-16. to 16. And she and Edwards have combined for a show they are putting on. Edwards playing her first game in two weeks. And Beckers, her first NCAA game in two years. She is just hungry for this moment. You, know, you could see it on her face all last season. You would see her on the bench in the sweats, like six of her teammates are yes. right now, but just staying ready. And working Mule. hard to get back. Mule called for the foul on the jump shot attempt by Avon. There's two fouls on Mule. Watch Nika Mule right here just getting too close to the airborne shooter and drawing contact there. Which is why she was whistled for the infraction. And that was a three shot attempt. So here come three for Avent. Richard Sr. from Sacramento, California. He was ineligible at the beginning of the year. And you might recall that the waiver, the, like the general amnesty back in December, a judge ruled, and that benefited Avent, who was able to come in and start playing. But she missed the first six games of the season, and Coach Reed said they really could have used her early on, especially in their non-conference schedule, which was uh, daunting, to say the least. Yeah, that was a gauntlet. And as we said at the beginning, it, it has prepared them for this moment, but Avent, she was on that SWAC tournament team and was also named MVP. So she has been everything to them at the end of the season. So those beginning games, yes. But she has had 
some time to develop that continuity and cadence with her squad. There's a horn set against the zone. Oh, Edwards was able to find a spot, and Shade found her. And that's what Gino Ariema told us yesterday. He said, we'll probably see a lot of zone, and we've got to pick our spots. Usually you think you have to shoot out a zone from the outside, but once you score on the inside, that makes you rethink the zone as well. This is what we're talking about, the intentionality on offense for UConn. They may be facing a zone, but they're not going to settle for outside shots. Aaliyah Edwards takes a dark cut from that elbow area right down to the strong side block. Somebody's got to rotate over to the rim line and meet her there. Turnover gives it right back to Jackson State. Hunter. Right at Edwards again, and another foul has been called on UConn. Well, what Jackson State likes to do out of their 1-4 high set, where everyone is across that foul line extended area, and two players right there at the elbow, they like to run an Iverson cut, where they circle the outside guards around. So that time, they rejected that action and took that backdoor cut. And that weak side def defense wasn't available to be ready to contest. Foul on Cadence Samuels. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship second round continues today on CBS, TBS, and TNT. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com. How about Yale? Just dialing it up. That's awesome. And the SEC on the men's side. Yeah. Some hits. Heavy, heavy. Heavy hits for them early on in this tournament. Beckers. James Beckers just kind of floats out there more than runs. And she just got to the spot and nailed the bucket. She's got 17. And her eyes are always working. She may look like she's stagnant physically, but mentally she is on a roll. And right here, 10 toes down. Fingers to the floor with the flick of the wrist. Paige Beckers, BB with the J on that from three. Paige Beckers, seven of ten for the floor. From the floor part made with her 17 points. Edwards with 12 points and six rebounds. 20-point advantage over the SWAT champions. You see Jackson State sitting in that zone, and they go a 1-1-3 one, one, out of that so they can give some pressure to the ball handler and then they shift back to a traditional setup in their zone. Beckers to Edwards, kicking it out around the horn. Shade, Brady, shot clock at five. And KK Arnold gave it up and Gina Oriama upset over there on the sidelines. Jamel Edwards had to get up and pacify him a little bit. Well, that was a solid defensive possession. Coach Reed was up applauding it because they were there filling all the gaps that UConn was trying to attack. They blew up about four gaps in that possession, forcing a turnover. I mean, Jamel Elliott, who played for him over there, had to get up and tell Gino it's going to be okay. There she is. What a staff. Yeah. Jamel Elliott, Morgan Valley over there as well. Chris Daly, who's been there since the beginning. And Tanya Cardoza, welcome back to the Nutbag State. Yeah. All those former players for Coach coming back. And Tanya Cardoza was a head coach at Temple for years. And came back to the bench. Jamel Elliott was head coach at Cincinnati for years and came back. has come up big. So many great freshmen just across the board, not just in this game, but across the board in women's basketball that have come game ready. That's a beautiful finish for Bowler. First team all SWAC performer. Senior, another Mississippi native on the squad. Oh, from distance. But check that that's Samuels. The freshman from Forestville, Maryland. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to have my hair like that for <laughs> yeah, I know. the summer. I told you I love her. Bowler back to back. Well, Gino Ariema 
was an assistant coach at Virginia. And he recruited me, and he said that we possess kind of the same kinds of activity. You and Q, you and Samuel. Oh, look at that. He's showing that she's got some range in her shot, has developed that over the years. But he also said she does about two of the ten things you need done, so I didn't know if that was a compliment from Gina or not. But he says two of the ten things she does, she does outstanding. There you well. go. There you go. But he has a tendency to say that. I'm sure no one's ever gotten a 10 out of 10 in his eyes. <laughs> Becker's probably as close. Edwards, Shade. Unselfish basketball by the Huskies as we have 30 seconds to go in the first half. And another drawn foul. Well, UConn has put gas on the fire. Ashlyn Shade knocking in a triple. Paige moving the basketball right in the shot pocket for Samuels as she knocks in a triple. And then Edwards heels to the three-point line. Long two, but she'll take that. Put that in the bag as well. And Edwards, that's one thing she's not yet developed. She's taken three three-pointers this year and has yet to bury one, but takes an incredible skill set with her. And she has great hands, and that's what you love about Aaliyah Edwards, just her ability to move well off of the ball and be ready to just catch and shoot. And Paige Beckers has been able to find her with consistency all season with that. Breland, one out of two on that trip to the line. So the shot clock is off now for Beckers and UConn. Getting a high ball screen here from Edwards are setting that up. Maybe a double drag action. There's Edwards with a monster screen. Yeah. And then a foul with just over five seconds left to go in the quarter. It's going to be on Jackson State. Well, after that double drag action, they like to isolate Edwards down inside, and there's an entanglement down in there. That was on Hickman, her first. Paige Beckers goes to the line where she is one for one in this game. Beckers a career high in scoring average this season. Just over 21 points per game. And coming off the Big East tournament where she was the most outstanding player where she averaged 28. The last six games, averaging 27, and that's just a mark of consistency because you know she's going to be marked with the best defenders from opponents. Jackson State at the buzzer gets the shot to fall. Diane Bowler with some big buckets late in this quarter. Well, give credit to Jackson State. They're not going away. They're going to stay courageous and knock in some dramatic buckets to head into the half. 13 of their points. Beckers has 19. Let's go to the studio. L leading the way. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. UConn Huskies leading Jackson State 49-28. This is a first round game of the Regional 3 in Portland. As we take a look at today's most reliable team brought to you by Xfinity and it is Beckers and Edwards get it done. Well, they have been just spectacular when it has come to impacting the game. 38 of UConn's 49 points they have scored and assisted on. They have been magnificent in terms of their consistency and their efficiency on both sides of the court for the Huskies. 33 points between them, outscoring Jackson State, the SWAC champions who only have 28. Pam Ward. Along with Christy Winter Scott in uh, this uh, basketball game, sort of kind of going the way we expected to, and we're seeing the stars show out for UConn. Well, you've seen Jackson State try to mix up their defensive schemes. They started out man-to-man. -man, they've switched to some zone. But UConn, they have found the answer every single time. They're moving the basketball. They're making the extra pass. But I think, Pam, most importantly, they've moved well off of the basketball. They have made themselves available for the extra passes. They've made themselves available for creases in Jackson State's defense. And they've been able to attack and finish. And Jackson State, some impressive play by Tyann Bowler. Tyon, pardon me, with 13 points, including a buzzer beater. And we had ourselves a 
We had a goaltending call, too, in the first half. We did. Let's take a look. After this game on ESPN2, we'll be here for Syracuse and Arizona. That should be a very entertaining game. The Asia Fair and the Orange. Second-round winners will play Monday. Scores, and then the winner on Monday will travel all the way to Portland, Oregon in the Sweet 16. And this environment is so exciting just to get things started here in stores. Another game coming for us as well this afternoon will be exciting against the Arizona team taking on Syracuse. Angel Jackson with the basket as we take a look at the lineups on the floor brought to you by Capital One and for UConn they start a couple of true freshmen in Arnold and Shade. Nika Mule, who said this is going to be her last season, has been a mainstay and one of the best point guards in history of this program. We've already talked about Edwards and Beckers and their importance. K.K. Arnold, one of the freshmen who start with the miss, but Shade gets him an extra 20 seconds. And that's what we were just talking about, right? The extra pass. Page made that to the corner, even though the shot didn't fall. It was the proper play. Shade left open. Becker's founder from all the way on the other side of the court. I mean, Paige Becker's is like a duck on the water to me. It's like she's so poised, but she's always mentally working. Those feet are always working. Those eyes are always surveying. And she makes the right choice for the team to score. Great lesson for young hoopers watching this game. Becker's this time with outstanding defense. And then Edwards... Got hit again in the face. Listen, you don't think Paige Beckers can score 40 a game? She could definitely do that. But she loves to facilitate and set the team up in great ways. Four assists now for Beckers. Well, that's the unselfishness, and that's what separates her. She is so elite in terms of being a fantastic teammate and team player. Mule coming up with the rebound. Beckers, another zip of a pass. Back to Page. Shade. Beckers, a couple of times passing up open shots. Yeah. But that was the proper play. I'm applauding the extra pass because you love to see that. You don't see that a lot. Inside and the finish for Shade. And Shade now with 14 points. From Noblesville, Indiana. Yukon inducing a timeout. We are back in stores, Connecticut, making a habit of getting into the tournament all the time. They have won 132 games, tops in Division I, 11 national championships, and an incredible strength, 14 straight Final Fours, snapped last year when they lost in the Sweet 16. Last time they won a championship, there's Stewie with the trophy. It was 2016 when they had won four in a row. That's Carol Walters on the left, Morgan Tuck on the right. They know something about championships, and in opening games, they've just been dominant. Oh, absolutely, and it has been phenomenal what UConn and Gino Ariema have been able to accomplish here at UConn. He was talking about the leaky ceiling in the building they used to play in, and, and now it's come to sold-out buildings and continued sustained excellence over the decades. And they have a beautiful practice facility as well. He said they're very rarely in here. Beckers takes a shot. practice facility instead of coming into Gample just with the two baskets can get more done they went over there for film study as well during their practice time yesterday I mean just the names that you think about I mean Diana Taurasi, Maya Moore and it just goes on and on and they always come back to continue to pour into the current student athletes here as well 17 seconds to shoot now for Jackson State Jackson Gets the friendly roll. Angel Jackson, Jackson, the USC transfer, has eight points and a couple of blocks. Leah Edwards working on Jackson, who got her third block. No, call it a foul. And Angel Jackson doesn't like that one with the wry smile. And even just goes to Mika Reed. Third foul on Jackson. 
four-time SWAC Coach of the Year. Coming up next, don't touch that dial. That's what people used to say back when TVs had <laughs> dials. It's Caitlin Clark and the rest of Iowa, the number one seed, Regional 2 in Albany, taking on Holy Cross, who beat Presbyterian in the Don't Call the Play-In game, first, the first four game. How about Lisa Bluter and the Iowa Hawkeyes and what they have been able to do? I mean, it started at Kennick Field. I was there. 55,646 people filled the football stadium to start the season, and they've sold out 30 of their 32 games this year during the regular season. Big Ten tournament sold out for the first time ever. They played in Minneapolis, which is not far. Borders Iowa. And I love islands. They say, oh, it's only like a five-hour drive to yeah, the Twin Cities. And they'll do it. <laughs> Nothing to it. Make the trip. Mule. Shade. A lot of shots over there on that baseline. Yeah. It's the extra passes against that zone that have really been a gem for a UConn. This is how you can separate yourself against the zone. Move the basketball, set screens. You see Edwards with the screen right there. Nika Mule gets herself down into the paint. Now the defense has to sink in, and you can spray out passes like Shade, who can pay it off with the triple. The Mule just picked up her third personal foul. Luckett trying for the three-point play. She spent all five years at Jackson State, and Coach Reed really giving her a lot of props. The Jackson, Mississippi native who stayed home. She's won a whole lot of championships. Yes. And that means that she's picked up a whole lot of hardware as well. As she should. I mean, they've earned it. As we said, 51 consecutive home wins, 18 and 0 in SWAT competition this year, bringing home the tournament title and their fifth regular season title. No other team has ever done that. Won five in a row in the SWAC. Another for Shade in that spot. This time she doesn't get the roll. Got one earlier in the game. So look at she's gonna have to buy <laughs> like a, a special <laughs> jewelry chest just for all this hardware. I mean, just spectacular, right? The things you never forget. In 10 years, you're gonna look back at those rings and remember what it took. Not necessarily that you won, but what it took to win. Becker is brilliant with the hesitation and then couldn't get either shot to follow. That one. I was going to say, Luckett with the four tournament championships, and she's won a regular season championship every year she's been with the Tigers. The convergence that time on Avent. Avent did a good job there of attacking the paint. Doesn't have to be with the basketball in hand. Attack the paint with hard cuts. Force the defense to make decisions in there. And that's what I love about this Jackson State team. They're relentless. They're continuing regardless of the score. It's not who they're playing, it's how they're playing. And they're playing with toughness. Second foul on Aaliyah Edwards. The fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game is on the networks of ESPN. For more information, go to NCAA.com. You're home for all 90 NCAA Championships. First round, heading into the second round, continuing through Monday. Then we have Sweet 16 and Elite Eights in Portland and Albany. Sweet and Elite. Ooh, nothing like that. Final four in Cleveland, where it was back in 2007. Tennessee won, a little Candace Parker action. That's an offensive foul on Edwards for third. Oof. Let's take a look right here. Aliyah Edwards trying to attack. You see the extension of that right arm. Oh. The officials are going to take a look at it. This presentation the of the NCAA foul, Women's uh, Championship UConn on ABC continues review. after these messages. Well, 
Welcome back to Stores. We had a foul on Aaliyah Edwards right before we took a timeout, and the officials have decided to upgrade it. Let's go over to Lisa Mattingly, who is our NCAA rules expert and analyst. Lisa. Hey, Pam. I thought that's a great job by the crew there. Uh, it's an unnecessary act. It's the off arm, if you'll take note of it from that baseline angle. Uh, that off arm, not protecting the ball. It's not a basketball move. So intentional foul is the right call here. Absolutely. Thank you, Lisa. And Edwards picks up her third foul, upgraded to an intentional for unnecessary and excessive contact. Yes, and that is the proper call. Is Lisa Mattingly eloquently discuss with us, and yeah, you just can't do that. It's tempting. You just can't do it. It's tempting. Tempting? You film on those, maybe? I mean... Maybe back in I the day, before there was replay? I didn't have anything else to throw, so <laughs> <laughs> I almost, that's the best I could do. <laughs> the bowler went to the free throw line. Edwards... That intentional foul notwithstanding, having an excellent afternoon with 16 points and eight rebounds. And a solid performance by her, a couple of assists as well to wow this home crowd. Just under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Winner gets the winner of our second game between Arizona and Syracuse. Three-pointer, no. Basketball. The officials point Jackson State's way. Gino <laughs> looks down his feet. He's making sure he was not to his area. Yeah, he's like, make sure I'm in the coach's box. As he got a warning earlier in the game. That's a nice move by Crump. There's that same play. They like to rise the ball side and screen it. And then attack downhill. Nicely executed by Jackson State. Well, first team all conference this year. And there's several grad students. Shade with the finish. And Shade has been fantastic. Really productive on both sides. She disrupted that play as well. She's got 12 of her 21 points in this quarter. She's creeping up on her career high in scoring. Now an offensive foul and a moving screen. To the fans. Uh, I mean, it, folks, it's nasty here. <laughs> it's mid 30s, raining, miserable, and those fans, those students were out at what, 5 in the morning? 5 in the morning, and tents and all of that race their way in the doors to get the best seat possible. And you love to see the continued support of this storied program. And they're on their feet the entire they game, are. not just in the lower bowl, but in the upper. Place is packed. That was a walk. Yeah. Nice attempt by Bowler, but took the extra step. Trying to get around that staunch defense in the paint that UConn is presenting. Makes the cut, gets the ball, runs into a double team. Mule left open. Bowler, correct, uh, pardon me, that's Crump who came down with the rebound. And she goes coast to coast. That was a pretty bucket right there. Nice and smooth finish to the rack. Floated her way in there. Nice transition here by Maya Crump. Just in and out and up top to get to that second line of defense and stretch it out. Oh, nicely executed. She knew that she was going to run into a bigger body once she got past that primary defender and didn't matter. Off the inbounds, Beckers. That is just a little bit of room. That's all she needs. Just needs a sliver of light to attack along that baseline, and she's long and lanky as well. Nobody there to box out. Walker, who got the putback. 
Nate Beckers right now with 21 points. And there's another travel. Nate the mule perplexed. Gino Ariema not happy with that one. Gino turning 70 today. He's been up on his feet all, all game long too, just like the students. This team up by 22 points. We got a lot more basketball coming your way this weekend. The March Madness continues, specifically here. Really looking forward to this one. Syracuse and Arizona. Arizona beat Auburn in the first four. And we get to see DeAsia Fair, one of the most prolific scorers in the history of women's basketball. And right after us on ABC, we're going to take you to Iowa City, where there's some basketball going on. Iowa getting ready to take on... Holy Cross, so you get to see Caitlin Clark's debut in the 2024 NCAA tournament. Caitlin, numero uno in scoring all time, and there you see Fair, and she's uh, she's coming up on Jackie Styles, who is such a great player at what was then called Southwest Missouri State. <laughs> How about all those buckets? So that's going to be so much fun. I know you guys are going to stick around for those games this afternoon. The madness of it all. That was a terrific pass from Crump into Bowler. Love the aggression that Jackson State is continuing to push. Miss Brady gets it in to Beckers. Something you consistently see with the University of Connecticut. Their post players are outstanding passers. Outstanding passers. I mean, we go back to Rebecca Lobo and winning that first championship here for Gino Ariema. Stephanie Dolson, and just resigned with the Mystics. Yeah, back to D.C. for Big Mama Steph. Great screener, terrific passer as well. Look at the screens being set and just the discipline. A little motion, a little chin action there with the screen at the elbow for Beckers. And then Beckers felt that Jackson was fixing to block her shot, so she bounced it back out. And Shade really gets the bucket. And Ashlyn Shade now has a new, or has tied her career high. She has been fantastic. Super active. Jackson lost the dribble. Shade actually now with 23, and that is a new career high. She had 22 in a regular season game against Butler. Going for another one. Well, that wasn't a bad shot because there was a cross match. And then Jackson didn't come out to her. Even a fancy spin move. But then another foul has been called, and Joe Vasily, you can read his lips, said stop because the UConn players are continuing to complain about the calls. Let's take a look right here. Initially vertical, but then there was a break of the principle of verticality and a piece of the arm. Second foul on Brady. He missed all of last season. Coming out of high school in San Diego. Here's Avent at the line. Avent transferred from Texas Southern. And she's been a key piece for Coach Reed. And this is the highest seed for Jackson State coming into the tournament. Like 45 seconds now left to go in the third quarter. Jackson State just being outscored by one point in this quarter. And the offensive boards, they've been attacking those, and I think that has been the difference maker to keep them close in this quarter, eight to nine. Three pointer, absolutely buried by Avent. She's their best three-point shooter and showed it. 
She has the biggest heart right now, too. She's playing with some toughness. And the foul out on the perimeter. Well, you have to stay aggressive, right? And shoot your shot. And this is what Avent does right here. You play under the screen. Becker's a little late, rotating over to help. Watch the action right here. A little bit too late to contest it. Just a tough bucket. Mule decided not to shoot. Now Brady back to Mule. Puts it up. Hits it. In the final second of the third quarter, Nika Mule, who sometimes can, is much more of a facilitator, certainly over her career, buried that one. Uh, Nika Mule knew the clock, and she knew that ball was going to come right back Tell up to her at the nail extended, and she nailed that one. Year. And even hey. all the way here in Stores, Connecticut, it's Clark O'Clock. <laughs> that young lady going to rush out of here with her family going Love out it. to watch Caitlin at 3 Eastern time. And this year, all-time leading scorer, passing Kelsey Plum. First team All-American, no matter what the team is. And going to that national championship, got, got in there against LSU last year. Right now, they're, they're not one of the favorites to get there. UConn, actually, according to ESPN Analytics, is second to South Carolina with the best chance of winning the title. And we asked Gino about that yesterday and making this a PG version. He said he doesn't believe in analytics. He did say yes. a bit something a little more <laughs> heavy than that, but that's the gist of it. But, well, Iowa, they have an opportunity with the last season for Caitlin Clark in an Iowa Hawkeye uniform to get it done. Yeah, because she's not going to use her last year of eligibility. Beckers thought she was fouled. Instead, she scored again. And that's what we were talking about with the analytics. Even as a three seed, right. UConn is considered the second most likely to win behind South Carolina, who has not lost a game this year. And right. you see Iowa part page is six percent. Right. And the way he's seen Caitlin Clark galvanize the game and not just women's basketball but the game of basketball in general has just been phenomenal to watch with her humility involved in that as well she understands her assignment travel on edwards who hit the floor after a rebound how about tim mccraw yeah. tim mccraw doing a, a, a concert in iowa and he wore a yes, Caitlin Clark jersey yes he did Love it. the whole time and this is the respectability across like music entertainment sports Basketball, football, everything. We've just seen everything collectively coming together for the greater good. We get to see Caitlin in Iowa and Holy Cross coming up at the top of the hour, so stay right here with us on ABC. Edwards, 16 points and 10 rebounds. Yet another day at the office for her, her 17th double-double of the season. Coming back, first game in two weeks. Broke her nose two weeks ago today, and the... Big East tournament against Providence. Right, missed the last couple of games. But she's worn the mask before. You know, I would have concern if this is the first time that Aaliyah Edwards had, has had to wear a mask, but it's not. She's, she's used to it. She's had to pop it back on. Certainly hasn't seemed to bother her today. Beckers with great hustle, but couldn't save it into a teammate. That's a double dribble. She put her hand on the ball. Ball goes back over. It looked like Breland thought that Avent was going to take that back cut. And Avent stopped the cut, so she picked up the basketball. That's thrown high and not to a player really on the court. There's Gino. Well, that's the last place you want to throw the ball away. Would you better? Rebecca. On to the next play, but that face. And uh, Rebecca Lobo is in the studio today, and I'm sure she knows that face well. <laughs> you just don't look over there. I'm sure right. she doesn't, but she right. might not, because she might not look over there. Maybe just on replay. Jackson hits the bucket. <laughs> Jackson now into double figures. 2-2-1. Two, two, Jackson State, they've just been trying every kind of thing on the defensive end. Trying to slow down UConn. Motion offense. That is just picture perfect. Just 
it's like a well-oiled machine, right? You talk about the six injured players for UConn and, and all of these sad, sad things. But when it comes down to it, who's out here? And how are you going to perform? And they have just been executing to perfection with great timing and cadence on the offensive end, reading and reacting off of one another, depending upon how the defense is playing. And it's always interesting and fun to go to a UConn practice, fun to watch it, I'm sure, maybe right. not necessarily the to be in the practice, to see the precision and yes. the repetition, yes. and then you just see it translate on the court. Edwards again. And nice soft touch once again from that elbow area for Aaliyah Edwards. And it's just tough to stop that, but you have to rotate on the pass. If you're going to be in this zone, matchup kind of defense, you got to be ready. Here comes Paige. Picking the stick. The Paige Beckers, three UConn Huskies have at least 20 points in this game. They're up 80 to 52. UConn having their way here in stores in the passing lanes once again is Paige Bucket laying one in. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Some action from yesterday. Middle Tennessee State with the upset win over Louisville. Virginia Tech able to win without Elizabeth Kitley convincingly. And Iowa State trailed by 20 to Maryland. And Audie Crooks was pivotal in that comeback. Check out this line. She's a true freshman, not just 40 points. She only missed two shots. That's insane. I mean, 18 of 20 to go along with her 12 boards. She was just a minute down inside, especially in that second half when you saw them just flip the script and get the dub. Barbara Kennedy at Clemson at 43 in her debut. And that has been broken by Audie. Just a freshman, 18 of 20. Can you even fathom that? Uh, no. They will play Stanford next, Iowa, playing out there in Palo Alto. They will play them tomorrow. Jackson, nice move on the baseline to draw a foul from Edwards. That's four on Aaliyah. Jackson heading to the free throw line. Back-to-back -back defensive player of the year in the league. Fourth in the nation in block shots. She had 95 coming into this game as Edwards gets a well-deserved ovation. And she's got 97 right now. And we're going to check out today's game track brought to you by Invesco QQQ. Your game track. UConn, as you might expect, up in all the positive categories in this game. Three players Edwards, Beckers, and Shade have at least 20 points. And you see UConn with 21 assists on 31 made shots, and that has been the story. That and paint points. 26 to 14 advantage for the Huskies. Shot clock winding down for Mule. They need a shot, they get it. Contact, but no foul after Arnold was able to get off a last second shot. Crump, can't get it. That's definitely an over the back call on Jalea Hickman. We really like how Angel Jackson was trying to set that drag screen in transition for Maya Crump. Just couldn't pay it off. It's a made shot, but you like the actions that are occurring here for Jackson State. And Jackson State, this is a good basketball team. They absolutely ran the table in the SWAC, regular season unbeaten, and won the tournament. And they did it with style. A lot of grads on this team who were playing their last collegiate game, unless there's a miracle comeback. Shot clock again at five. Beckers through the foul with two seconds left on the clock. Well, it's been a journey for Jackson State, and, you know, I just love how Tamika Reed has been able to bring out the best in each of her players, and not necessarily tactically all the time, because we've seen the excellence there going 18-0, but to bring out the best 
of them as young people who can make a mark and whatever they're passionate about. If it's hoops, then so be it. But if it's something else, then they have the tools necessary that have been ingrained over these years under her tutelage on and off the floor. Which is really what the job should be about. Her 11-year-old son, Carlin, is here as well, travels with her. Great family atmosphere that she has done now, just in her sixth year. And they, in their preparation for coming into the tournament, this is, this is in a row now, seven straight games, St. John's, Kansas State, Oregon State, Mississippi State, Miami, and Texas, all in a row back in late November and early December, and they beat St. John's. Yeah, they beat them in Puerto Rico in November, so, I mean, this is uh, a well-tooled program in terms of experience under their belt. And taking on UConn, everyone knew this would be a, a tough out for them. UConn with just five losses this year, all of them to ranked teams. Last loss was to South Carolina back on February 11th. And Don Staley has given Tamika Reed so much credit and love and respect as well. I mean, Tamika Reed lost her mom five or six years ago and then lost her brother. And then right after she got the job as head coach at Georgia State, her dad was at the presser and was so proud of her. And he passed away three months later. So she has had some turmoil, but has been stronger because of it. Shade, back rim, Becker's rescues. Wisely takes it out. Becker's with a double-double, 28 points, 11 rebounds, six assists. So we've got star power galore on ABC. We got Paige Becker's here. Boy, Bowler's a good basketball player, knocking down the three. When this is over, Caitlin Clark, all-time scoring leader. Iowa takes on Holy Cross here on ABC. And I've covered Caitlin Clark since she was a freshman. And she has had the same temperament from day one that she has right now in the postseason in Iowa City. I mean, she has just been a phenomenon and tough to stop. Freshman year, I think she averaged 27 a game. This year, averaging 32 points per game. And always drawing the top defenders from opponents, and it doesn't matter. I mean, she just slides to the left and pulls logo threes at ease. We have Caitlin coming up. UConn will play the winner of Arizona Syracuse. We'll have that on ESPN2. KK Arnold heads to the bench. Two points, four rebounds, a couple of assists today for the true freshman from Wisconsin. I love her game. She just brings so much sturdiness to the perimeter. A bowler putting on a show. It is most likely her last collegiate game. She's got 22. And no regrets. Just lay it on the line. Why not? Six grad. Students are on this team for Jackson State, including Bowler. Shot clock again in the single digits. Shade knocks it down, continuing on her career day scoring-wise. She's got 26. Bowler elevates. Goodness. Ashlyn Shade has just been phenomenal for UConn. The freshman, you see her right there, number 12. And Maya Crump has just fouled out of the game, gets a nice hug from her head coach, Tabika Reed. So 
with 28 points, 11 rebounds, 7 assists, and no turnovers. And there's Maya Crump, who has seen her collegiate career come to a close this afternoon. But what a career she has had, part of this Jackson State program that has ascended as the powerhouse in the SWAT. Yeah, she had that hand injury last year, and, and you just see the emotion on the face because you don't set your mind up to lose. You don't set your mind up for it to be over if you're a staunch competitor, and you see that. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Had a lot of them from UConn players, but Beckers did it on both sides of the ball. And Paige Beckers, she is just dynamic with her skill set and what she has the ability to do. Aaliyah Edwards as well. I mean, just solid, solid performances by both on both sides of the floor. But it's Ashlyn Shade for me. She has been phenomenal with her consistent play and her bold aggression in terms of her shot selection and ability to execute on the offensive end. It's been the big three, Beckers and Edwards, and then the true freshman Shade combining for 74 of their 86 points this afternoon. And remember, Beckers did not play at all last year. Tore her ACL and a pickup game yeah. in August right before the season got underway. I mean, you can just see this moment for her bubbling over all season last year. She was just waiting for the opportunity to get back on the floor. I mean, we've seen videos and pictures of Paige Beckers as a young girl just in love with the game immensely. And when you love the game that much, you fight for it with all you have. Brady with the block. Shot missed by Betancourt. Everybody was ready to they were. scream for her. Only averages about five and a half minutes per game. A good save. Hustle play by Haley Breland. She's a sophomore. She'll be back next year for the Tigers. And again, we remind you, coming up next... As soon as we're done, we'll get you to Iowa City. Nika Mule playing her second to the last game here at Campbell. She has one year of eligibility left, but has announced that she's not coming back. Jackson had a nice move to get to the bucket, but couldn't finish. But we'll get to shoot free throws. And Nika Mule is one of Gina Oriema's all-time favorite players. You look at her numbers, they're not eye-popping. The most points she's ever scored in a game, 19 in her freshman year in Creighton, but she does so much more. And you talked about the 10 criteria of Gino, and she does so many things well. And I'm sure he's going to miss her next year, her leadership. Seventh in the nation in assists this year as well. She's a table setter and an organizer, and you have to have more than one of those on the floor. Junior Ariema, he told us, he said, hey, Paige can't be the only one making shots for us. We need everybody. It's got to be a collective effort. And I bet Nika Mule is looking at her assist numbers. What did I have? How did I set the team up? She's not looking for her points, which is refreshing. There's Daly and with the score, the uh, box score, and Paige Pecker is also very interested in that. Mule, seven points, seven assists, and four rebounds. We will see her on Monday against the winner of our second game between Arizona and Syracuse. And that's going to be fun. Anytime with Krista Fair, yes. the Asia Fair who has scored, only four players have scored more points than her in women's basketball. And a lot of great players on that Arizona team that, like Elena Quayle, who was so terrific in the fourth quarter and they win against Auburn. And Jada Williams, that little, that little freshman hey, point listen. guard, man. Hey. She's dynamic. Circle her name because she is one to know as well. So many fantastic freshmen across the board in women's basketball this year. Just come in with no fear, ready to attack it. Brady, nope. Jackson State hustling all the way. Could not save the possession. Jackson State will conclude their season 26 and seven. 18-0 in the SWAC. We are inside a minute. 
That was a travel by Shade. Shade came off that curl screen there. Jackson State got an early 4-2 lead. Then UConn went on a 17-0 run. And it has been all UConn since then. Rebound by Arnold, who's going to slow things down. And the fans all start to stand here at Gamble in appreciation of yet another first round win for the Huskies. And birthday buckets all around for the Huskies on Gino Arima's birthday. Samuels with the miss. Now Jackson State bringing it up. Bowler, boy, what a game she has had. The senior from Meridian, Mississippi with 25, but not enough. The Yukon Huskies, 28 from Beckers, 26 from Shade, a career high, and 20 points, 10 rebounds from Edwards. And much respect. Green says she was really looking forward to coaching against Oriema. And UConn takes it, 86-64. Well, they got the job done. They sustained their excellence and effic efficiency in the entire game. And they impacted the defensive side of the floor as well.